Hello and welcome to my channel. Today is my first day recording on YouTube. And this channel is going to be for the new techs out there. And I'm going to start very simple and try to bring some videos of real world situations in IT, information technology. Today I want to start with uh, something that people might be interested in is that when they load up Windows Server 2019, 2016, they will see something called Server Manager Dashboard. And as you can see here, this is the Server Manager Dashboard. It gives you a nice, clean looking dashboard, basically. You got dashboard, this clicks on local server. This is going to bring up stuff about your server. Now, this is actually a domain controller that I'm logged into. I created, I converted it to a domain controller already. And you will see all servers, Active Directory, Directory Services, DNS, File, storage services. But if we go back here and we click on local server, well, let's go back to the dashboard. Down the bottom here, I'll start at the top. You can see add roles and features, add other servers to the manage, create a server group, connect this server to cloud services. What you can do is that you can configure this local server. So if you click on this, this is going to take you to the local server. So basically, these are like little shortcuts that take you around dashboard. Add roles and features. This is where you're going to click on this wizard, add roles and features. The wizard will pop up. And it's going to take you to loading up a lot of roles that this server can do. And if you click on next, you can do role based or feature based installations or remote desktop services installations like for VDI. You click on next and then what it's going to do is you can select a virtual disk. Um, but here are the roles. As you can see here, Active Directory Domain Services is installed. Okay, ADDS. DNS is installed for domain name system. Server is installed. File storages, you can see where that came from. Partially is installed. And you click on that. There's so many services. There's so many roles that this thing can do. You can click on next, you know, and you've got more. I mean, depends what you want to turn this server into. So we get out of that and we can click on local server. When you click on local server, this properties, it gives you the properties of the actual domain controller or the server that you're actually on. It tells you the computer name, the domain that it's belongs to your firewall windows defender firewall is it private is it on is it off remote management is it enabled remote desktop is that enabled so you can remote into this pc nick teaming if you have two network interface cards on this computer you can combine them together ethernet it tells you the properties of your ethernet card that's physically attached to this computer IP addresses last installed updates Windows updates last check for updates this is all about updates this is all about Windows Defender antivirus is it on is it off feedback and diagnostic settings Internet Explorer enhanced security configuration either on and off time your time zone Product, product identification tells the operating system 
This tells you the hardware information. It's the VM virtual platform processors. And how much memory you have installed. I have this on a virtual machine. It's on my personal machine. It's just what I have. One gig, 50 gigabytes. Not very much, but it does the job. Tells the events, the services that are running. Right now, he says it's 2016 services that are running. There's 17 events that are collected. You click on all servers. This tells you basically you have a domain controller, one server. This is your Active Directory. This is the server as well, what it's running on. DNS tells you the server that it's running on. Again, it's this one. Your file and storage services. This is where you can look at servers, look at volumes, like the C drive, stuff like that. Disk tells you how much, you know, 50 gigabytes. Um, this tells you shares. Like I have a share here called test. Um, if I right click, I can stop sharing it. I can go to properties of it, bring up the properties, see his permissions to access the file on the share. I can go down to settings. So I can make changes there if, if I need to. And his work folders. Not much else there. We come up here to the top, we have manage, tools, view, and help. Manage. Here's where you can add roles and features. You can remove the roles and features as well. Let's say you add a role and you don't want to use it anymore. You can ask for it. You can remove it from the server. You can add more. You can create. You can add more servers. You can create a server group. You can server manager properties. If I click on server manager properties, um, it gives you some other features there. Tools. This is like administrative tools. When I created this to a domain controller. It added Active Directory sites and services, Active Directory users and computers. We click on this. This will open up users and Active Directory users and computers. Um, okay. You can see here users and groups. These are user group. These are users. These are groups security groups, computers. You can see I have one computer that's joined to this domain. This is a computer name. If I double click on it, you can see that it gives you the computer name, its DNS name, domain controller type, workstation or server. Here's the operating system. Member of, it tells you what group it is. If you see a member of tab, if you see two words, think of it as a group. This is what the computer is a member of a group. In delegation, location, these are things you can put in, dial in. So these are all the, the options or properties which you can actually give this machine in Active Directory. And of course, this tells you, the, you know, we have only one domain controller. And foreign, or something in there, but um, you know, this is it gives you an overview of the bank controllers, computers, and stuff like that. Um, these are all the built-in groups. When you create a domain control, you get a lot of built-in groups. Administrator, the administrators, the backup operators, the guests, um, you know, print operators, remote desktop users. The users, you know, you, these, these are all built, put in by Microsoft when the operating system was built. And these are all groups which you don't really want to delete. But you can add people into these groups to make people or groups more active on your server. And they can do more things when they log into different computers around the domain. We'll close that. Also, you can get into your DNS. So DC1 is the server. You can click on this. There's a drop down right here. It gives you four lookup zones, reverse lookup zones. 
And you can click on this, expand these. And you can see all kinds of good stuff in here. And if you go to, like there's the one for the computer that is on there. That is the record, the A host A record, which is very important. You can click, you can click on this and it'll tell you some stuff there. You can go on security as well. These are the NTFS permissions. So that's, that, that's like important. They have Microsoft Azure services. So there's so many, there's a lot of things. And of course you can go locally on the computer too, like system information. You click on system information, you can, you can find out a lot about your system. So this is a very handy little dashboard that does a lot of things, registry area editor. You can go in there and edit the registry. You know, um, this is very technical in here, but don't be afraid of it, embrace it. Services, you can click on services. And these are basically all the services that are running on this machine. And you can click on them and it'll tell you a summary, a description of what it does. You know, we can scroll on down to, let's pick a spooler. Um, actually, it's not in there. Um, let's see, how about the user profile service? You know, the user profile service is very important. I mean, you're responsible for loading and unloading user profiles. So as you can see, it's running. You can change the startup type. You can have a person log on with higher credentials. Recovery, dependencies are very important. Services use a lot of dependencies to make them run. You turn off this service, it's going to stop the other services as well because it's dependent upon those services. So keep that in mind when you start running around with services. But again, for another video. Um, print management. You know, this is a very, another very important feature that, you know, we should really start looking at. It tells you the printers, um, the drivers. These are print servers. You know, you got DC1. You know, your ports, the printers, the forms, what it can print. It's a very handy little tool there. So as you can see, Server Manager is very in-depth. There's so much PowerShell. You can click on PowerShell, and it will take you right into PowerShell. So... You know, to get to use this is this, they try, Microsoft tries to bring everything in one nice dashboard for you. So you're not looking around all over the place. You're not clicking on search and all that stuff. So, all right. Um, that is server manager dashboard. Um, I can't think of anything else, but uh, I think that is a good start. And you got the view tab which you can change how this thing looks, of course. And then the course, the help tab will help you as well. And as you go about server, you can see the build date and stuff like that. So, all right. So that's server manager. I hope you uh, enjoyed this video. And um, I hope you learned something about the server manager dashboard. It can take you around the operating system into places that you never thought of before, but it gives you one nice one place to go for a lot of your administrative duties. All right. Well, thank you for watching and have a great day or night, wherever you are at. Thank you for watching my video. See you next time. Bye-bye.